the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is your help and salvation. Come, O oh, hear, now to His altar draw near, joining in glad adoration. Have mercy on you, Lord, for I cry to you all day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiven, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. It's so good to see you on this Sunday morning. Thank you for coming to church on this second, 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. The Lord talks to us about suffering, the fruits of suffering. Suffering with Jesus brings all the joy. Offer up your crosses and pick it up with him with joy. For the many times we have not served the Lord and handled our crosses with joy, let us call to mind our sin. I confess, Almighty God. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have really seen in my thoughts and in my words, and what I've done and what I've built in. Therefore, I ask you, Mr. Mary, for all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God of mercy on us may forgive us our sins and bring us a life everlasting. Amen. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, Lord Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, we take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day, I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts like the earth, arched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. 
Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I, will sh I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, <clears throat> today we can connect very well with Jeremiah. Today Jeremiah is complaining. If you read to the beginning of the call of Jeremiah, it was a beautiful call. The Lord invited him to uproot, to pull down, to build. God gave him power to shatter rocks, to do many good things. And he was excited like many of us. But along the line, the challenge of being a messenger of the good news has come. Because of preaching the word of God, it has brought him suffering and pain and mockery. People deride him. And so Jeremiah went to God today and said, Lord, this business has come to an end. I will not preach in your name anymore. Because when you tell people the truth, far too often, they will hate you. Nobody likes to hear the truth about ourselves. It's good to tell you you are nice, you are doing well, everything is okay. You won't die, corona will not touch you. 
And then we hear such message and we are happy. But when they tell you the truth that hurts but liberates, far too often, those who tell the truth have few friends. So Jeremiah today was telling the Jews, you will go to exile. Because of your apostasy and idolatry, you will go to exile. You will suffer. Violence is coming. War is coming. And so people hate Jeremiah. So Jeremiah ran to the Lord today like most preachers we do. A lot of us can connect with Jeremiah. When you begin to state the truth of God's word, it hurts, but it heals. It challenges people, but it changes people. So Jesus says to us, only the truth will set us free. Sometimes you can also come to the situation of Jeremiah. I pray, I go to mass, I fast, I don't do drugs, I don't do alcohol to stupor, I don't do all these things. I am faithful. God, why? The problem of TODC in theology. Where is God when horrible bad things happen to good people? Sometimes you ask yourself this question. But I don't do any bad thing. I am a good man. I go to confession. I pay my offerings. I do the hope and healing. I give collections. I even fast. But God, why? Why cancer? Why? Why did I lose a loved one? And the Lord will say, you are thinking the way human beings do, not as God. Suffering always brings good things. It's not always that suffering brings bad things. Suffering most times is a royal road, especially when you suffer for Jesus. Back in Africa, I was not always used to cooking. You have all kinds of people serving you. But here in America, you've got to fix your meal. So sometimes when I'm shredding, the onions are crying. I say, why is the onions beating me and spanking me? The spices. But when the meal is ready, you forget the suffering of the onions and the waiting on the cooking. Suffering sometimes, most times, at the end, brings joy. A woman in labor will be screaming in the labor room. Oh my gosh, oh my God. But when he sees a beautiful baby, there is joy. And that is what God tells us today. That the little crosses he sends our way are to help us towards the glory of heaven. Just last Sunday we saw Peter. Who am I? And Peter stood up like a very sharp student. You are the Christ. The son of the living God. You are the Messiah. And Jesus said to Peter, congratulations, good student. It is not flesh and blood that has revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. You are a blessed man. So today again, Peter came with the success of last Sunday to talk to Jesus. Jesus was telling them, my destiny is the cross. The healings, the miracles, the multiplication of loaves you see, that is just the icing on the cake. My mission is a cross. And without a cross, there is no crown. And then Peter figured it out. If I allow my master to go the way of the cross, I will also go the way of the cross. So let me stop it. So he took Jesus to the side and was like, No, Lord, this cannot happen to you. God forbid, you can't suffer. And what did Jesus say? Get behind me, sir. There is a gift of God I want you to pray for. It is called the gift of discernment. To know what to do at the right time, at the right place, with the right people, with the right intention. It's a great gift of God to discern. Last Sunday, Jesus discerned Peter as speaking from God. But today, he is not speaking from God. He's speaking from the devil. And Jesus said, this is how men think. Humans think this way. We think pleasure, power, control, revenge. 
but God thinks altruism. There are many times in our lives we've got to tell ourselves, get behind me, Satan. There are times we have to tell ourselves, get behind me, addiction. Whatever comes in the way of your journey to the cross, get behind me, Satan. When you drive on the road, sometimes you will see, do not enter. Other times you will drive on a way that says, one way, wrong road, turn back. In our Christian journey, there are areas that are marked wrong way. There are areas in our lives that are marked, do not enter. There are areas in our lives, traffic merging. There are areas in our life, stop. And like the laws of driving in America says, stop means stop. Not a rolling stop, but a complete stop. So my dear friends, what is it in your life that you need to say, stop and get behind me, say that. I met someone and I said, do you come to church? He said, no, I don't go to church. And I asked, why? He said, well, I sleep on Sundays. That is the only day I've got to sleep. The day of the Lord is the day you've got to sleep. Supposing you sleep and sleep on to meet the master. We've got to tell people the truth in charity and kindness. But when you tell the truth in charity and kindness, get ready to suffer like Jeremiah. So the Lord tells us today, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross each day. What is the cross God has given to you? There are many crosses in our lives. Maybe your wife is your cross. She nags over everything, nags over the dog, nags over the television channel, nags over the light, or oh, the light is reducing. Now, that is your cross. Maybe your husband is an egret doesn't appreciate anything, you pour yourself out, you do your best, he doesn't appreciate anything, that is your cross. It could be in the office, it could be your job, it could be anything. Seek the will of God in the crosses that he has sent to you. For whoever loses his life, serving God and neighbor will find it. But whoever wants to preserve his life and save it, you do not want to spend your life, you will lose it. So where do you stand today? The Lord speaks to us in Jeremiah and in Peter. Take up your cross each day and follow me. And the, beauty, the beautiful thing about the cross is that there is a reward. When the master shall come with his angels in his glory, he will repay each man and each woman according to what your conduct deserves. So before you go to bed tonight, just lie down in a particular examination and say, supposing I die tonight, have I done enough to receive a good reward for my conduct, or have I not? This looks scary, but there's a solution. The letter to the Romans in the second reading says, renew your mind. So we need mind renewal. Is a mind team, is a mind game. When you change the mindset, your general life outlook will change. So, how do you renew your mind? By listening to the word of God, by reading the scriptures, by Lexio Divina, holy books, life of the saints, and especially by visiting Jesus in the Eucharist in the Blessed Sacrament, in adoration. Just sit quietly. Don't, you don't need to pray or talk. Just look at God, and God looks at you. Then you will see the pages of your life passing before you, and then you begin to change what you can change and renew your mind by good thoughts. Renew your mind. Be conformed to Jesus. Be configured to Jesus. The greatest sacrifice you can give to God is holy life. It's a life that is worthy of God. So do not drop your cross. Do not come down. Hang there. Don't shorten your cross. 
Don't abandon the cross because in that cross is your crown. Let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, life from life, through God from to God. The God to not live, on association with the Father, who redeem all things we need, for us men of our salvation. The King of heaven and the power of our glory was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the cross of Christ. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, like one of the speakers. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the heaven and death, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, is the Lord of God, who is spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one who the Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead. I can go to come. Dearly beloved Christ, let us turn to the Lord and pray for the grace to carry our crosses with joy to the crown. For the church, that she may, she may be a light to all nations and boldly proclaim the joy that is the result of following Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. For all nations throughout the world, that they work for lasting peace and mutual respect for human dignity and not be motivated by greed and self-interest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. <laughs> that we, like Jeremiah, let God's word burn in our hearts, be moved to share Christ's saving message to those around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary Jane Sanal, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may strive to share the wisdom of the gospel with our family and neighbors so as to guide them to pursue the truth and live it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all corruption be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power and be replaced by leaders who respect life, religious liberty, in all that is in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, holy matrimony, and a dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for all who have died, that they may come to know the fullness of God's joy in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, may the Virgin Mary pray with us as we say, Hail Mary. Lord, bless is the fruit of thy God, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in all of our death. Merciful God, we turn to you and ask for grace to carry our crosses with joy. Give us the courage to renew our minds and to follow you through Christ our Lord. i 
pray, brothers and sisters, that the sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice, the sacred offering of the Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what is celebrated in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your wonderful life. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with the host of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clear. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the heights. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, to give life to all things, to make them holy, you never cease to gather our people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, up to sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command to celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and gave it your thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the seventh passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance for three left, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, 
scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. You must stay our day and night, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, and by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us wave one another the peace of Christ. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him, Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are coming to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. Thank you, my I promise you to worry.
Peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, who beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to save you in our evil, through Christ our Lord. You are invited to the return of the weekly Bible study called, Who Am I to Judge? The study comes from the Catholic website, formed.org website that helps parishes, families, and individuals explore their Catholic faith. They will be held on Monday, August 31st, and September 8th from 7 p.m. until 8.30. We will meet in the school cafeteria. And we will meet in the Monsignor Gaelic room and follow social distancing guidelines. Please bring your mask and Bible. A promise of hope and healing. Wow. And thank you. Your generosity is at work assisting our parish in a truly amazing way. We have already had 65 families respond and have a total of $25,899 pledged. This might sound like a huge number, and in many ways it is, but it's been through the generosity of many. We're getting close to the end of the program, but we need everyone's help. 
your response and participation is very important. You can make payments using your credit card or an ACH automatic withdrawal through our online giving program as well. Please see our website for more details. And I just want to really thank you from the depths of my heart for your great outpouring and generosity. You know, the, the average gift has been like $364. And if everybody in the parish made that gift, we'd raise like $350,000. It's just amazing what we can do with the generosity of you. And, and you know, I know that uh, we helped Father Joe in Uganda. I know Father Sunday also has some projects, little tiny ones actually, wants to put it kind of put a roof on a church in, in Nigeria for about $25,000. Your generosity may make us make that possible to help us do and, and further these great missions that are way outside our parish boundaries. I just deeply appreciate your generosity. I know it seems like we ask like an awful lot, and I just deeply appreciate it. You know, and the one list he left out of his you know cross is he could have said, and your pastor, he could be your cross. I'm sure that probably is the case for Father Sunday. But nonetheless, um, I just deeply appreciate your deep gratitude. He was shaking his head probably, right? Never would an assistant be a cross. I mean, I can't imagine an assistant being a cross. No, nonetheless, um, just thank you from the bottom of my heart for the parish and for the church in this very tumultuous and dangerous time. You know, we just pray that we we're open to God's will and, and can embrace that cross, that cross that leads to salvation. Thank you. Also, to thank you in Africa, we are told, thank you does not have an, an, an end. So thank you for your thank you. <laughs> I want to thank the pastor, and on behalf of our pastor, our wonderful pastor, my friend and brother, Father Glenn, to thank you for surprising God with your generosity. You have done so well. You are still doing more. The greatest charity to us is your prayers, your smiles, and your contact with us. Thank you for being here, and thank you for the hope and healing appeal. God bless you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go and announce the Gospel. Thanks be to God. St. Michael. We are Send us this day of battle. Fear defense against yeah. the wickedness and snares of God. May God yeah. rebuke you and help And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, to cast the evil of the spirits all about the world, seeking their souls. Carry your cross with joy. <laughs>